So I have a name for our podcast. What? Are we still doing that? I mean, of course we're still of course, doing that. Because we, the name we have is terrible and we need names. Uh, what, what the name of the podcast should be called I Have Thoughts About Rings of Power. <laughs> That's a very good name for. Yes. Is that a good name for a podcast or a good name for an episode? I don't know, but if you look at the percentage of episodes, it's either Arcane or Rings of Power that we've spent the most time on. Uh, mm-hmm. Just you know, yeah. Um, you. We have thoughts about fantasy TV. We have thoughts before we get into our thoughts about mm-hmm. Rings of Power. There was a giant food heist. This last week, at least as at time of recording, many, many of you, far too many to name, have sent this to me. Wow, massive food um, heist. Yes. Okay. So. Is it fall themed? I'm hoping for a fall themed food heist. It's not really. You need it's to find meat. us some pumpkin th- heist. No, no one's stealing pumpkins, but if we assume like uh, a gigantic tailgate party is going down somewhere. Okay. Okay. I can go with that. Um, a backyard yeah. cookout of some kind. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, someone, three someones, mm-hmm. uh, have been stealing meat across the Midwest. Okay. Uh, and the initial investigation thought that this was a million dollars worth of meat. Wow. They eventually uncovered more than 45 thefts across six states totaling more than $9 million worth of meat. Wow. So is this like stolen. steak or is it just all kinds of meat? It doesn't say, it just says meat. So I assume it's all kinds of meat. Um, every article about it has pictures of hamburger patties, but they look like okay. very stock photo yeah. pictures of hamburger patties. So I don't know. So is, tell me this, is cattle rust- rustling a meat heist? Is cattle rustling a meat heist? Yeah. Are these modern day cowboys? Boy. Well, you know, I bandits. Don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I would, I've, yeah, I mean, it. We, we have to assume some level of intention behind yeah. the theft, uh-huh. right? Yep. So like. Does it matter if you steal the uh, meat when it's still walk, walking around on its own? <laughs> or does it not become food until it's been processed? I would argue that it is not yet food. Okay. Um, I so, don't want to get into a position, mm-hmm. and maybe this is not where your brain went, but this is where my brain went. Oh, no. I don't want to set a precedent where every kidnapping is potentially a food heist because we don't know if they're cannibals or not. Dan, <laughs> you are a weird dude. <laughs> uh, okay, that is yeah. not where my mind so, went. there that's, you go. Uh, that's uh, okay. Okay, so we're pretending that rather than being like, rogue vegetarians trying to prevent meat from entering the system. These are indeed tailgaters. Um, They might be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Now, there's been a lot of high-profile vegan protests in the news lately. Mm -hmm. Uh, But those have all been like sit-ins in grocery stores rather than actual heists of it. I think that they would understand that stealing the meat just increases the demand through laws of supply and demand, and that their goal would be mm-hmm. to reduce demand, yeah. and therefore, um, and so... Well, reduce demand by some means other than flooding supply. Yes, I Like, suppose. vegans are not going to be like, oh, you want beef, huh? Well, you flood supply, it doesn't actually reduce demand, right? It just No, it just will reduce the cost. Yes, um, so... Yeah, so here's my favorite part of this story, mm-hmm. is, uh, first of all, it never says, like, like we mentioned, yes. what kind of meat is being stolen, mm-hmm. and it never says what the meat is going to be used for, but then at the end it also says, there was no information on what will be done with the meat. <laughs> so, like, mm, this yeah. reporter was really concerned that they found $9 million worth of hamburger patties and did not invite him to the cookout. So Yep, yep. I mean, if you're going to ha- have stolen meat, it's got to be some sort of underground, you know, ring. They're, you know, you're not tailgating just like yeah. the the Broncos game, right? You're you're tailgating something else nefarious. Like <laughs> maybe this is just for the the food heist buffet where they're, you know, they're getting together for their annual food heisters conference. Uh, this and, is the Death Eaters yeah. tailgate party mm-hmm. at the Quidditch match. There you go. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, jokes aside, we have to assume that when someone steals $9 million worth of meat, yeah. uh, that they are selling it black market to outlets of some kind. Yes. These are all going into hospitality industry at massive scale. Um, 
which means that I am actually really interested to for yeah. this investigation to follow through and find the buyers. Yeah, yeah, that would be because it, it'll it'll tell us something who they sold to. Yeah, right. Because the people they sold to are the ones that don't ask too many questions about where their meat comes from. <laughs> and you know, I'm not going to be as worried if someone's not asking detailed questions about where their gnocchi comes from. Mm -hmm. But if they're not asking where their they're meat not comes asking from, about the meat. Yeah. Also, let's give some credit to them because mm -hmm. this is real meat. Like if McDonald's turns out to be the one buying all of this meat. I have to completely change my opinion of their only semi-food hamburger patties, right? See, you say that. I don't like McDonald's hamburgers. Uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will join you with that. Yeah. But I've lived in a country where it's not illegal to sell meat that is mixed with other, uh, with um, usually they're using onion um, mm -hmm. or things like this. Uh, and we joke about McDonald's. There's a law. These have to be 100% beef. Uh, I've had burgers that are 30% beef. <laughs> and you can tell. Yeah. Uh, they aren't necessarily bad. And it's not like the places are mm -hmm. uh, are making... Um, it's not like it's something nefarious. Just yeah. Everyone knows low-quality hamburgers are going to have a lot of... Have a uh, lot of onion sawdust or, in there. It's not sawdust. No, it's I a, know. Yeah. And I shouldn't make fun because yeah. like meatballs and meatloaf yes. and so on... We do yep. that all the time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes, there you go. Well, um, I have a question from the, the uh, one of the Brandon Sanderson subreddits for you. Okay, I is am so excited. Mistborn a food heist? Because part of Mistborn is about stealing uh, various high value metals that you then eat and use for magical powers. Yes, but. Mm -hmm. Here we're getting into intention again. Mm -hmm. I would not say that okay. Mistborn is a food heist okay. because it's not explicitly a food. Yes. The person who steals it is going to ingest it, but it is not itself a food, even though it eventually gets eaten. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so you're saying like my if I like to chew on pens and I steal pens, it's not a food heist. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good question from the subreddit, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Thumbs up on that Very one. Good I question. thought it was amusing um, to read. Also, the deeper I get into Stormlight Archive, the mm -hmm. more I realize that there is some level of food heist in almost every one of these books that I just never realized was there. Uh, Lift, of course, Lift, of course, is constantly, is constantly food heisting. Is she heisting? Uh, but or even she Shallan just... in Oathbringer, yeah. Shallan gets into food heist territory. Um, Lift is more like food thievery of opportunity food food pickpocketing yeah. mm -hmm. food pickpocketing is that a thing i mean what she has like edge dancers 60,000 words 70,000 yes. words mm -hmm. and it is her stated goal the entire time to steal pancakes it is that's, that's true that is a food heist yeah, yeah it's it's not a, an organized food heist but it mm -hmm. is definitely a carefully at least intentioned food heist. Maybe not a good planned food heist. <laughs> yeah, it's Lyft, so the plan is not uh, not necessarily the the key point of her uh, her her narrative. But yes, mm -hmm. all right. So, rings of power. Rings of power. Have we have so many thoughts. It. I have finished it. I, I have also finished it. Four episodes in one sitting, so that I could finish it. Holy cow! Yes, and they are long. I give them credit for that. Like several of them, I watched were seventy minutes. Yeah. Um, which is always I like seeing that. Uh, personally, that the, the non-standard uh, lengths uh, when I when I look at uh, a season of a show, and some of them are seventy minutes, some of them are fifty minutes, some of this, mm -hmm. I'm like, all right. They're just telling the story the way they think it is best with still some constraints. Like they can't yes. go, you know, yes. three hours. But um, well, uh, and, I like and that. I, we got to give credit to mm -hmm. the writers of all of these streaming services for figuring out how to do that well. Yes. Because the early couple years of stream native TV shows yeah. were paced really poorly because they had freedom and they didn't know how to right. use it. Or well, they were yet. just pacing just like network television. Uh, Stranger yeah. Think Things did that uh, first mm -hmm. season. You'll notice that the, they have commercial breaks yeah. uh, almost and things like that. You can like, tell they're following that yeah. exact kind of five-act TV mm -hmm. drama. Um, I wish that Stranger Things, frankly, had stuck with that model mm. because they don't know how to pace. But um, Amazon has always been very good at it. And I think everyone has kind of figured out how to do it well. Yes. So, yes, I agree with you. I like seeing... 
the 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 non-standard run times. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are your general thoughts, having watched season one of Ring, thoughts, Rings of Power? Having watched it all. Mm -hmm. um, boy, my thoughts are mixed. Okay. I still like the show a lot. Okay. I think it did a lot of dumb things. Mm. Uh, I think it did a lot of goofy things. Uh, I think that it tried way too hard to go way too deep into fan service. Mm. Like, and we talked about this, I think, in our last yeah. episode, that season one did not need to be the origin story of every single element of Middle Earth, right? And that's what they tried to do in the yes. end. Uh, that said, I did enjoy it a lot, and I am excited for season two. Okay. Uh, as you might expect from my previous uh, episodes talking, I am not as high on it as you are. Mm -hmm. uh, my end opinion of it was a uh, meh. I thought it was fairly mediocre. Okay. Um, um, some strong elements, some very weak elements that I think are towing it down. Um, and the good elements were mostly bungled, I felt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right? Uh, yeah. The big one for me is the Harfoots. Um, the Harfoots, I feel, were just utterly bungled. Um, and my, my feeling on this is that we, I can feel what they probably should have been doing, and at least in one draft probably were doing, which is mm -hmm. this is the more lighthearted side of this. We want you to walk out of this loving the Harfoots and understanding why not Gandalf has a bond with the hobbits yeah. many hundreds of years later. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what they say, that all works. No one walks alone. In the end, we will do what's right, you know, and help the stranger, like um, all of that stuff. But the bulk of their text, like in these last episodes, there was, there was a woman who comes to the guy in charge and says, it's time to execute them. Let's take their wheels and make them die, right? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah. We do not need hobbits talking about murdering other hobbits. Um, <laughs> and this is our second time. Um, yeah. Like, and yeah. Uh, it's so baffling. And then they only accept the stranger in after he proves useful. There's no big heartedness to that. That is pure utilitarianism, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, if he's useful to us, then. And then in the last episode, where episodes are like, all right, we'll go help your friend. Like, why? You haven't built to this. There's nothing, yeah. um, you they, know. They, that big heartedness does come out at the end because they're yes. like, you know what? He's one of us now. We're going to stick with him. And that doesn't. It's they, they, completely They didn't unearned. establish that yeah. properly. Completely unearned. Nori is delightful. Nori yeah. is great all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, uh, and I see in her uh, narrative a built-in sort of, I don't know, this is what it should have been. I wanted, uh, looking in retrospect, episodes one uh, she, or, in, or in two, she hides the stranger. Mm -hmm. Episode three or four, you know, they are very worried about the stranger. They talk amongst themselves. They decide to leave him behind, but then they can't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are kind-hearted, and yeah. he's one of them. Not because he's useful, not because he has magical powers. Mm -hmm. They bring him along. Near the end, he does this thing with the magic that they're all scared of, but then they still welcome him in, reaffirming, you know, maybe he runs off on his own because he's scared yeah. uh, of what he might have done to them. And they all band together and say, no, he's one of us. We need to protect him, right? And mm -hmm. then go after him. That's the arc. That's so easy. Yeah. It's so simple. It's Seems so like obvious. Such an, and I would even add to that. Yes. I want a moment in there somewhere mm -hmm. where he does something or he is menaced by something and they realize that he's more like them than they give yes. him credit yeah. for. He's not exactly. the big giant monster. Uh, so it's, it's you know, part of it is we're good people. We're going to help him. But also mm -hmm. it's, oh, there's this bridge of understanding between us. And you you need to cut the whole thing of leaving Nori's family behind. Mm -hmm. It's just ridiculous. Um, but, you know, like this seems the most obvious plot 
in the whole thing and a surefire crowd pleaser. Yeah. Um, and makes us love the Harfoots as we should. They don't need to be shades of gray. Everyone else can be. That's mm-hmm. the, you don't, we don't need grim dark hobbits. We really do we not really need grim dark hobbits. Need the grim dark hobbits. Okay, so while we're talking about the Harfoots. Yes. Um, mysterious stranger, not mm-hmm. Gandalf. Yeah. What are your thoughts on him? It, um, I, is, is he okay. Saruman? So I think the most interesting choice is still to make him Saruman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that they will do it. And I kind of admit that maybe at this point they shouldn't. Main reason being that his arc for the last several episodes is, am I a good person or not? Mm-hmm. He then affirms and decides he is a good person. And so if, you, if that is Saruman, then his arc is completely undermined and ruined. Because we know he will come <laughs> back and burn down the Hobbit villages. Yeah. Right? The scouring mm-hmm. of the Shire uh, is a thing. And so um, it is, once you have made someone's arc, am I good or not? I suppose, like, it would be more interesting to be, no, I'm not good. But the problem is he has to be good in the middle. It's all messy um, and things like this. And so at the end of the day, they have cast someone who looks like Gandalf. Mm -hmm. They have gone to great lengths to build a bond between him and um, hobbits. Yeah. It probably just should be Gandalf. And if it's not Gandalf, Probably. I'm going to be worried because uh, I think in a previous episode, I talked about the Spock factor, that anytime a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, something to do with uh, Star Trek is having troubles, they bring in Spock or a Vulcan to be like, this will fix it. It's mm-hmm. either that or they bring in Worf, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'll, I'll just be constantly worried. Oh, their la- ratings are slipping. They, they'll, they'll use Gandalf. They'll, you know go drive a dump truck up to of money up to Ian McKellen and be like, please do a cameo. Um, and that's worse. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, yeah. what are your thoughts? Uh, mostly the same. Like they had an opportunity. First of all, he seemed to gain the powers of speech remarkably quickly. He held a staff. I'm okay with that. Okay. Right? Like in my head, their power is so tied to staffs. Something's wrong with how he's landed. He doesn't have a staff. He doesn't have and a support he structure. Gets one and he, he gets just... one, and it uh, okay. it helps. That's my that, head cannon. That's your head cannon for yes. it. Um, I th- they had a moment. They had an opportunity to make him more gray, mm-hmm. and they didn't. They went so hard in that final episode on look. The Harfoots are super good, and also he is super good. Mm-hmm. Um. And if they had kept him kind of in the middle of, yeah, you know, I am going to save you because these guys are evil, not yeah. necessarily because I am a good, right. and wonderful person, yes. then I would, ab- I'd be all aboard the Saruman train. Mm-hmm. But right now I'm thinking the same. I think it's kind of got to be Gandalf or... Radagast is a, is a, an acceptable option if the... If the Hobbit movies hadn't ruined Radagast, <sighs> then Radagast could be an interesting option. Yeah, I, I, I don't want him to go Radagast. I would mm-hmm. rather them do like Palando or one of really? the other out of okay. nowhere is Starry, uh, just because I keep wanting them to explore more interesting ideas mm-hmm. instead of, you know, seeing Boba Fett as a child and whatever kind of nonsense that prequels always do. Yes, uh, but. That's what they're doing. I I'm will going say, to be okay if he's Gandalf mm-hmm. because he is an excellent actor for Gandalf. Yeah, um, I, I, th- I think that there are more interesting directions yes. they could have taken. But if they decide to make him Gandalf, I am at peace with that decision. Yeah. Um, now I want to ask you about the. At this point, we basically have to call them ring wraiths. The the three people in white who show up. Yeah, um, I. I was kind of disappointed to see that they were ring wraiths, uh, and they went hard on them being ring wraiths. They did. Um, uh, I thought they were super cool villains, though. I liked them. I did too, um, except for um, no. I I'm I'm cool with this. I'm okay. cool with it. So in the first ep- or the last episode or whatever it is, where they said. 
we've come to you, Lord Sauron, right? Mm -hmm. um, my son who was sitting down is like, oh, you were wrong, dad. And I'm like, no, this proves that I'm right. That's <laughs> them saying it at the start of the episode means that he, that, that obviously it's, it's not obviously him. not yeah. yeah. Um, and like narrative structure wise, I had never for a moment thought that he was Sauron. Um, but as soon as they said that, then I'm like, oh, well, there we yeah. go. Um, and then my brain started to say, they're only here to pr provide a red herring. Um, and so I do like them. They were cool. But I asked my Tolkien fan brother-in-law, who I've misquoted be before. Okay. Um, and I apologize to him on that. He's told me things that were right, and I misquoted them wrong mm. on the podcast. But uh, And I said, do you have any idea who these are? And he's like, I have no idea. And he's like, it's totally possible this is something from the lore that I'm not uh, familiar yeah. with, but I am at a loss at trying to figure out who these might be. Well, see, I was happy mm -hmm. for them to just be like rando human sorcerers. Mm -hmm. um, and is there such a thing in Middle Earth? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I mean, there is enough of the uh, little bits of lore we get about the uh, very poorly named what they call the Black Numenorians, uh huh, uh, to suggest that there is some level of non Istari magic user okay. in the world, um, and I would be more than happy for it to be for that to be what they were. Mm -hmm. um, I can understand why they wanted to make them ring race because there's nine ring wraiths and this is a nice shortcut to fill out the nine right i think oh you think for, that they are some of these kings that are going to become ray great i, I just do. assumed that the uh that the showing it was like they are like the ghosts and the ring wraiths and things <laughs> and yes it was very hard into evoking that imagery mm -hmm. at the end yeah but I didn't see them actually being ring wraiths. Uh, I thought they're just like, well, we need imagery that says this is a, this is an undead creature. Yeah. The trouble is nothing about this show has convinced me mm -hmm. that they are willing to color outside the lines. Uh, and so okay. they need a bunch of bad guys. The Nazgul are a bunch of bad guys. So that's who they're going to use. Okay. Um, I, I will be curious if you're right. I think this is a cool theory. Yeah. It didn't enter my mind. Okay. Um, in my mind, these are some weird Istari, Istari, whatever. These are some weird, you know, mm -hmm. mythological things, or they were creations of evil that had originally been like moths or something, because Gandalf turns them back into moths at the end, mm -hmm. um, that had been brought to life by Sauron during, or Morgoth during his reign, and, you know, they were something yeah. like that. I mean, they obviously weren't very smart, because they, yeah. for instance, they're looking for Gandalf, they find a bunch of hobbits who have been hanging out with him, and then they don't interrogate them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, if you're mistaking Gandalf for Sauron, then, you know, like... We weren't fooled, <laughs> so the fact that they were doesn't speak highly for their, uh, yeah, yes, their powers of observation, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so just to, to put the final ring mm -hmm. on the theory here, yes, uh, no pun intended, mm -hmm. I do suspect that a lot of what we're gonna see over the course of the series, yeah, is the corruption of certain men into becoming the nine Nazgul. I agree with you on that. And I am very excited to see that. Mm -hmm. Theo, the, yes. the teenage boy, mm -hmm. he is my favorite character in the show mm -hmm. at this point. He's the most interesting one with the most interesting arc. Uh, maybe him and maybe some of these other like okay. kind of dirtbag guys might end up in that position. Um, I but think also, I do think they're going to use people like yeah. this to, to fill out. That, that would group. be smart. Uh, I think Theo is the ghost king who betrays Isildur and gets cursed. Okay. Um, personally. Um, because he, uh, having a, a relationship with Galadriel now and can kind of, they can jump forward a few years mm -hmm. and he can be a soldier and things like that and trying to reclaim his land and he can work 
with the um, you know with the uh, the real Numenorians yeah. and things like that because we know that they're going to obviously have the betrayal of Isildur, mm -hmm. um, and you know those guys coming back and saving you know everyone yeah. at the end is a nice redemption story. So that's going to be somebody. So it's either Isildur's buddy or it's <laughs> Theo, right? Or it's Theo. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Maybe they'll introduce some new characters in the, the, the next mm -hmm. uh, next seasons. Uh, yeah. But that's my early bet on Theo is that because I think they're revoking Ring Rate too hard on him. And one thing we know about the showrunners is they love they red hair. They love to fake you out. Yes. They do. Um, so. Yep. All right. So we've covered my biggest grievance. Okay. Uh, do we want to talk about your biggest grievance and then talk about the things we both like the most and then kind of move on from yeah, there? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. So um, your biggest grievance and then be thinking of the thing you liked the most. My biggest grievance, and this is such a dumb one to mm -hmm. pull out because every show has done this. Game of Thrones did this. They all do this. Um, time and space are apparently meaningless in yes. this universe. And this is one of the very first things we complained about. And mm -hmm. then we got to this point where, uh, you know, the people from Numenor ride into battle to save this one random village from orcs, and they just happened to get there. They mm -hmm. sailed on, what was it, like six or seven boats that apparently had Three. hundreds of horses. Oh, we were laughing about that <laughs> so much, because uh, they said, we're going to bring 500 people. And as they were sailing out, I said... How many people do you count on those boats? Uh, and we, like, this is part of the problem. I was laughing too much at the mm -hmm. show to give it a higher. Like, I ended up, I'm like, I'm six out of ten, right? Yeah. Um, I am, I was laughing at it too much to give it anything higher than that. Like, they showed the one horse being craned over. I'm like, all right, where are the rest of the horses? And then they go below decks. And there's no horses. There's no horses below deck. Yes. Somebody, somebody, I saw this, I think on Reddit, mm -hmm. maybe it was Twitter, drew a diagram of what the boats must look like. Yes. And they were these little, you know, those dumb little kind of Viking longship things mm -hmm. that they ride around in with this gargantuan like balloon <laughs> under the water that had <laughs> 500 horses and all of these things yes. and armor and spears and everything else. Um, it is ridiculous that... That's what they took to cross the sea. It is ridiculous that they got where they needed to go, that they showed up coincidentally at that point, at that time, for absolutely no reason. And they show a cavalry charge to get there. Yeah. I mean, this was uh, there. This was ridiculous on the level of having a cavalry charge into darkness mm -hmm. in Game of Thrones, right? Like. Yeah. So they land. They don't know this pace is being attacked. Yeah. They have no idea. They ride their horses in full armor at a gallop to get to a place they don't know is under attack. Mm -hmm. um, number one, you just can't do that even if they were under attack. Your horses yeah. would arrive useless. Um, they wouldn't be able to do anything. And now, there's things that could have been done. We could yes. have seen some level of investigation. Yes. They could have spent... Uh, one extra episode with them like riding around, finding those tunnels that the orcs yeah. were digging, doing things like that, following clues yes. so that then they arrive at the right place at the right time in a believable way. Right. You know, get um, get us a horn getting blown that is yeah. like the horn. So I got to say, since we're on ridiculous military tactics, okay, mm -hmm. Um what do you think about leaving your fortification behind with walls and towers to go to a village <laughs> to hold off an invading army? A village with holes in the ground that that army came out of. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that as a, as a tactical decision? Well, I think that, I, I mean, time and space are meaningless, and so I have no way of knowing for sure, but I thought that that was a different village and they didn't know that there were holes in the ground. No, that's their home. Was it their home? I thought they went to that, some other home. Absolutely their home. They snuck past an army going to their thing. It's the same holes. It's the same village. Um, they they somehow, yeah. they leave their fortification because they're like, well, that tower might fall down. 
that's mm-hmm. never been established that it might fall down before, as I recall. Maybe it was earlier. No, it wasn't. All uh-huh. Aaron Deer looks up at the thing. Yes. And he gets this gleam in his eye. Yes. And apparently we're supposed to connect all the dots and say, ah, he's come up with the foolproof plan of killing maybe a quarter of them. If in, that may. By destroying their fortress. Um, and... So from a from a very bad narrative perspective, they uh-huh. had to leave that fortress because that fortress had the special thing in it that unlocks the deal and destroys yes, the, the they thing. Yes, they did. Which is, A, a ridiculous thing in the first place because yes. who builds the special... We create Mordor weapon. The self-destruct the dam button. Don't, like no dam you know? has ever been built with a self-destruct button. This is and then and then creates a weird mystical artifact to act as a key to it. Okay. I, mean, I want to ask you about they're that. They're doing this all the time, you know. Okay. I mean this is this is So this is yeah. a summonable sword yes. that is thrust into a stone keyhole. Oh, cool. And opens up. Someone it's, should use that. Yeah. Mm, do, yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. suspect that 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 was inspired by the Oath Gates at all? I don't know. Um, I didn't. I didn't see that. But if hmm. it was, then I'm honored yeah. uh, to have been so uh, so inspiring uh, as I rag on their decision. Like, <laughs> look, having a magical doomsday device, sort of thing. Okay. Right. All right. Sauron mm. in the past built this thing because the river wasn't dammed yet and they needed to dam the river to get enough water to cause the eruption that he wants to cause. And he can't release it until there are pits dug in specific places. So he puts his plan into motion to gather up the water, build me a dam, then dig these channels while the water is filling up. Then we'll let loose the big torrent of water and we have uh, we have the mountain. And that will create a giant volcanic eruption yes. in Mount Doom. It's a little bit Dr. Evil, right? It's mm-hmm. a little bit, here's my really weird, intricate plan. I can buy that in a fantasy story, right? Yeah. What I don't buy is you have a bunch of untrained sold, uh, peasants, right? Well, one thing we know is if you have untrained pe- peasants, fortifications are a force multiplier for them, right? Yes. If, if all they have to do is shove ladders and don't have to actually fight, they become super effective compared Mm to putting them in ranks in front of orcs and telling them to fight. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Now, now, as as ridiculous as the entire premise may be, Mm -hmm. I will say that the defense of and invasion of that village is my favorite fight scene across all eight episodes. Okay. Um, them kind of doing their whole little guerrilla warfare, archers on the thatched roofs, you know, we're going to send little burning carts down. Like it was a, it was a believably desperate defense put on by one fighter and a bunch of peasants. Okay. And I liked that whole sequence. I liked how they thought they won, and then there was a second invasion. Now, that was good. And what made that really good was that they were using their own people against them. And so it's reasonable that they're at an equal skill level and that our side could win. Mm -hmm. Um, Right? The same argument I was making before actually applies well to this one. Because if you've got a bunch of untrained peasants fighting each other... Yeah, they're not going to know to form battle ranks, and they yeah. don't. And mm-hmm. and that part was good. I will say this: this was the most grimdark episode, and we had members of the of my audience watching it grow nauseous and have to leave. Mm. Um, and so, if you're going to have gruesome. a TV yeah. 14 show, I don't mind if you you know there are MA shows out there. If you're going to have a TV 14 show. Do we need pulling the stick out of an orc's eye while he bleeds onto your face? Yeah. Levels of gore. Um, I think that um, I think they went too far. Uh, as someone who, in his books, I feel has gone yeah. too far. Before, um, I, for, I, I, for, I will agree yeah. with that. Given the rating that they were aiming for, I think they yeah. overshot it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, part of this sequence, I really loved the fake out with the old man. Mm-hmm. being given the sword. Yes. Uh, that worked really well for me. And also, um, Adar, or whatever his name is. He's a Uruk, highlight. He's really he's good. He's great. Yep. 
Um, and he's apparently Benjen Stark from Game of Thrones, which I didn't realize. Um, but the whole conversation he has with everybody while he's like, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get them to give up the sword. And then yep. when he's captured mm-hmm. and Galadriel is talking to him, that worked really well for me. It is. It's one of the highlights of the show. And absolutely, his at the end, uh, his very final line when she's like about to kill him and then says something nasty mm-hmm. and calls him an orc and he's like, Uruk. Yep. That's the best line delivery across all eight episodes. It was wonderful. Uh, and um, we're gonna we're gonna have to do two episodes on this. Dan. We are. We're gonna have to oh, come back uh, next week. So we're gonna be doing two episodes on Rings of Power's ending. This is everything wrong with Rings of Power, and next week we'll talk about good stuff about Rings of Power and more of what I feel is wrong and more of what we think but is wrong about Rings. Next of Power. week will be a lot of the good things mm-hmm. um, because I, I do think there's some good things. We're talking about one now. Yeah. Uh, Edar was great. Um, he was. I even like I was uncertain about the you know. You're building sympathy for him, but he makes a man murder a random child. Um, but then I, after I put together the plan of, no, you're planning to entrust this guy with the, the sword. Mm-hmm. You need to know that guy's not a spy. Yeah. How do you make sure he's not a spy? You see what he does when you make him kill one of his own. Well, and even that, Yeah. I love the way it was handled. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it is dark and terrible, yeah. uh, but... They, the scene cuts away. Yes. And you don't know what's happened until you see that old man yes. in the ranks marching on the fortress. And you're like, oh, yep. now I know the kid died. Yep. And then when he, you know, comes out, he's he's gotten yeah. the sword from Theo and he mm-hmm. says, old man, I've got a job for you. And then mm-hmm. we don't see him again for like 45 minutes. Yep. And then he is the one that creates Mordor. Yeah. That was odd. So well done. I loved it so much. And since we'll get into more uh, Sauron stuff next time, but since we're talking about good things here, Mm -hmm. the scene where Sauron says, do you recognize me? And he's like, no. And it's obviously, it's trying to imply that, um, that, you know, uh, Halbrand lost family to this guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, After that scene, I said to Emily, that was a really good scene because he's still Sauron. I'm almost 100% sure of it. Mm-hmm. What they're doing is they're establishing he's mad at this guy because this guy betrayed him and that he has a new face. And they did that while actually, to most audiences, implying this guy killed his family yeah. and he's mad at him for that reason. And so they got two crucial bits of foreshadowing in with a really nice red herring. That's their best red herring moment. Really well done. Uh, much better than the Lord Sauron uh, of the, like that moment was excellently executed. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, um, I I was really pleased with it. I'll just say that. No, uh, and it, was, it, it involves so Edar again. And yeah. I still really like Halbrand. Um, I think some goofy choices were made with Hal Brand, but uh, I really like Hal Brand and Sarod. I yeah, uh, we'll talk about this next time. It's my favorite, maybe my favorite thing about the the show is Hal Brand. Uh, is <clears throat> so it's I'll I'll save it. It's a tie. We'll, we'll my save favorite it. things we'll are talk a tie. about it later. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, time what and else? space. Any other stuff on time and space? Any other stuff um, on uh, time and space being meaningless? They're playing really fast and loose with how much time is passing. Like mm-hmm. the um, the hobbits, the Harfoots march with Gandalf for what looks like months. Probably wasn't, but it's at least implied weeks. Yeah. Um, and uh, at the same time, in the the defense of the village and stuff, can't have been weeks, right? Uh, and how long does it cost? I mean, the, the only way the timeline makes sense mm-hmm. at all is if things that look like they are happening concurrently yes. are not. Which is fine. You can get away with that. Um, yeah. I, I will give them that. Um, the, the other major complaint about time and space being mm-hmm. meaningless is Hullbrand has a wound so severe we cannot cure him here. We are going to have to do several weeks of hard riding on horseback to get to the elves. I had a snicker I'm sure at that. that won't uh, yeah. aggravate your wound in any well, way. Well, that's another one when uh, he was in there wounded. And I'm like, I'm going to have to take him to the elves. That's how he gets there. Uh, and I got it just right before they said it. I felt so cool because I'm, I've been wondering the whole time. All right. 
Yeah. I would not have gone so far as to forge any rings in this season with the things that they're trying to do. Oh, yeah. But I knew that they had had to, that there mm-hmm. was some mandate from an executive that says we need to see rings forged. And so I'm like, how are they going to get Halbrand up there? <coughs> I know he has to be involved. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the whole story is he tricked them into forging rings. Uh, and then he's wounded. And I'm like, ah! That's ah, how they're going to do it. They're, they're going to do it. And um, then they put him on a horse and rode him for like six days or whatever. And I'm like, mm. I mean, all the way from the Southern lands to the gray havens, yeah. that is like, um, that's like Florida to Salt Lake city. Oh, is it? That is a long, long way. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought I've, they said like six days. I've seen the, some maps yeah. overlaying various continents with middle earth. It was a long way. So I stayed away from reading any any threads or any commentary on this until I finished the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I haven't seen a lot of these things, but that's that's hilarious. Oh, uh, this this wasn't in response to the show. This okay. is just me being okay. a nerd. Um, I assumed that you'd been the there. Past. Were, there were fandoms. All right. Well, we're going to come back next week and we'll talk good things and then more of my bad things. We'll, we'll also talk about bad things, but we'll also talk about good things. How's that, Ben? Thank you.